I like you, and I appreciate that you're sitting here watching these stupid videos, but there are much better ways to learn about boundary conditions. So I suggest that you not watch this video. Go watch something else. I mean, some of the videos are okay, but this is absolutely the nadir of awesome right here. Check this out. Um, <clears throat> I <laughs> oh man, you got your open boundary conditions and you got your closed boundary conditions and you really do have to understand the distinction between these. But go watch a simulation website or something. I'm just gonna be able to draw sketches and they really suck. Let's start with a wave that's coming in here on a closed boundary condition. So that would be a wave coming in to a wall and there's a knot here. There's not, not a knot, no, there really is a knot. So that's the velocity of this wave pulse. And when it hits, when it hits, oh boy. When it hits, I'm gonna have time go this direction. When this wave hits, the rope is actually entirely flat. Oh my goodness. So as a result, what's going on right here is there's lots of energy. There's lots of energy at this location right here because here it's very clear that there's some energy. I guess it's potential energy because the rope or spring or whatever you've got that's carrying this wave pulse, whatever your medium is, is very clearly being stretched more than it ought to be right here. So that's where the energy is and it's very visible. If the energy is not visible, it can't be potential. So it's probably kinetic. You wanna guess which way this section of rope is moving? Mm-hmm. Which way is it moving? Moving down. Cool, so that section of wave is moving down. And a moment later, as a result, a new wave emerges. Oh shoot, I just drew my line. <laughs> okay, so let's pretend that's an axis instead. I've got, as a result, after, after that happens, we've got a wave, oh no, this is completely wrong. Watch this. <laughs> Now it's gone. Okay, as a result, I've got a wall still and I've got something that comes out this direction and goes away. That's inverting. Oh dang, it is inverting the original wave pulse because of the closed boundary condition. The energy is contained in kinetic right here. This section of wave is moving down, this section of rope right here. And so as it leaves, it is pulsed outward in the down direction. If we got a wave coming in, we got it hitting the wall, and we got it bouncing back outward and reflected inversely. Now, let's consider an open boundary condition where this is specified by a, um, uh, we've got this post here, and there's a ring that's attached to the rope that can freely move up and down. So here's our wave, and here's the ring, by the way, we're gonna see this in lots of other contexts with sound and stuff, but this is the general idea of an open boundary condition. As we get to this point, as we get to this point where the wave hits, we see that because the ring can slide up and down on the post, the ring still shows some energy here. All right, so let's label that lots of energy. Cool, we got lots of energy right there. And then as the ring wants to get back down, the ring will ultimately move back to our equilibrium position, but this pulse will have been reflected and the pulse will be reflected in a nice, identical, positive way. Now the pulse is going that direction. Here the pulse was going that direction and notice that it has not inverted. When open boundary conditions, there is no inversion. The wave comes back, is reflected exactly the same as it came in. And in closed boundary conditions, the wave is inverted. All right, that's also true with compression waves. I guess it's true with water waves, etc.